All right, what up, YouTube? Dang down here, D29, Don Quest 29. Um, another call update. I know it's been a while since my last video. I was supposed to upload some individual videos of each superstar I had made, showcasing their entrance, their signature move, and their finishing move. Just haven't got around to it yet, and I haven't forgot it. Just been real busy with the holidays passing and me working in general. What you're seeing right now on the screen are the 10 people that I have made so far. Technically it's only 9 because the Carter is nowhere near done yet. He just has a base. But yeah, these are the 10 people I have made so far. So let's get to it. Okay, right now you're seeing a brand new character I created for the first time in WD2K15, Jimmy Valentine. Now the name Jimmy Valentine I've been sitting on for the longest time. I've always wanted to use the name, just never knew how he was going to look at all. I just knew what his theme song was going to be and his name. That's it. This year, I decided to make him. And I love how he came out this year. So, you know, little body hair. Granted, it's a picture, but it works. Uh, Cupid tattoo on his right chest, you know. Uh, I think it's Undertaker tattoo sleeve, I can't remember. And uh, Cupid tattoo on his back. Black hat came out. I think it's actually a little bit darker than the rest of his tattoos, but I'm not gonna fuck with it. I'm 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 okay with it. It's not really that much of a sort to me. Attire is Jimmy Valentine. I manipulated it. Uh, I got it from uh, I seen a Mimi Valentine logo that I liked and I knew it would work perfectly. I just manipulated the M into a J, and, and that's it. Um, now the sides where you see the little like circles or whatever. Those originally were ribbons, and I had a whole ribbon, but I didn't know, it didn't look right when I put on the attire as the ribbon, so I just put them in different places and made it look okay. I'm actually going to change the ribbons, and the hearts on the back, on top of the valentine, I'm going to put like all over the tights. Not real big, but kind of like, but not necessarily all over the tights. I'm going to put them in strategic places to where it looks right. So instead of seeing these little circles on the side, you're going to see hearts instead. And um, I was going to do lips, red lips on his uh, trunks, but I can't do that now because a certain somebody already did that for their attire, who I'm not going to mention at this time. But um, yeah, the front, you know, the tuxedo uh, with the bow tie and everything. Got the little flower on the side with the corsage. Um, it's a red border at the top supposed to be the the string for the bow tie wrapped around the back and I like how that came out you know the ultimate warrior arm sleeve I think it works out perfectly elbow pad wristband ultimate warrior knee pads now the boots I love the boots and this is the thing with the boots it's it's a combination of Tyler Black kick pads on the front and the Brian Kendrick kick pads on the back so I know if infamous knew it it can't say that he knew it as soon as he seen it. So if anybody else can see it, then good for you. But that's what I was going for. I went with Tyler Black style kick pass on the front and the Brian Kendrick kick pass on the back. So the front says Jimmy Valentine, the same logo that's back there. But for some reason when I put it on the front of his kick pass, it got real distorted. So I put a random WWE logo in to fill in the spaces. So yeah. That's it for the tie. I really love how he came out in general. And the shirt, I seen the shirt that said uh, Be My Valentine on it. And instead, I just took out the Be My on the top and just put Jimmy. So, that works out perfectly fine. You know, RTW on the back. RTW wear. Um, yeah, he really came out perfect to me this year. And I'm glad I waited this long and sat on his name after all this time to finally make him. Um... Jimmy originally was created because I wanted a brand new character for my, my career, which I still haven't started yet, actually. So what I think I'm going to do is just say fuck to my career, do it eventually whenever I feel like it. I'm going to just finish his moves and just upload them. So yeah, Jimmy Valentine, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on to the next character, I guess. <laughs> okay, and the second character is me, myself in the game for the first time my actual face in the game for the first time ever so yeah this is Donnie Don Vito it's a play on my damn 
YouTube name and the nickname that everybody gave me, Dying Die. So yeah. Uh, it took so long to get my face to look right. And then the problem was I got my face to look right. But then I didn't, I couldn't get my lineup to look right. Cause I used another lineup instead of my own. So then I wouldn't get my hair cut and then use my own lineup. So yeah, my face came out perfect to an extent because there are only so many Morpha options we have. So if I can make my head a little bit taller, then I think it would be perfect. But other than that, it's spot on though. So yeah, this is Dying Don Vito myself. Um, yeah, decided to make myself for the first time because I'm like, we got the import feature, so why not? And it took me a long time to also think of the attire I wanted. But first, tattoos, a little, little yin yang. Got a skull with a uh, crown on top, say Dying Don Vito in the river at the bottom. Uh, EST 1989, you, I mean that's self-explanatory, and round Japanese on the side. Okay, now the attire. Um, where do I start? I I was looking at some some I randomly came across this this MMA website, and I was looking at some of the shorts, and thought someone would look good as tights. So, you know me, I went and started manipulating stuff, went to the lab, and this is what I came up with. So, got the little Japanese letters on the back, on the on the side. Uh, RVD Yin Yang with the dragon. It's a, it's a black silhouette of a samurai. And of course, it looks kind of distorted because you know how it is when you stretch logos. So I had to do two of them. Actually, I had to do three of them, actually, to get it to look right. You can see the, the hand with the sword on the front and the back because I did it again flipped the other side down and I did another one and put it somewhere to fill in the space so yeah got the MMA gear on the front for those of you just wondering these tights are Christians these are Christian tights in the game the ones without the logo on the side if you're wondering uh, I like the I like the tights with the knee pads in them already so yeah I got the Don on the side with Dying Don Vito under it in the print Boots came out decent, simple. I tried kick pads first, but when after I did it, I was like, I wouldn't wear kick pads if I was an actual wrestler. So, yeah, I just changed that. <laughs> now this wristband and the glove, I, I recently sprained my wrist at work, so I had a, a, a wrist brace on the whole time. So when I was creating myself, I had gloves on, regular, you know, full full length gloves on. Then I was like, wait, I got a wrist brace on. So let me just do like a a variation of that. Yeah, I just made it match the attire. So that's all that is. It's kind of it, it's basically think Bray Wyatt wrist tape, but I just changed it up. So yeah, yeah. You know I got the fedora, glasses. You know little button down Bray Wyatt shit. I changed the color white. Got the dial on the back. 99 Vito. That's the same logo that's on the side right here. And um, yeah, I literally love how it actually came out. Like I said with Jimmy Valentine, I'm glad I waited this long to try it. So, Dying Don Vito, ladies and gentlemen. And this is actually Dying Don Vito's second attire. Now, this attire basically just is like a variation of the first attire for the most part. So yeah. I been ran across this this uh, ninja skull with the Japanese letters on the head, and I always wanted to use it. I was gonna make it in paint tool until I realized we don't have paint tool. So yeah, this is what happened. Got the Don Vito on the back, the Japanese font, same Japanese letters, little circle for the Japan thing, same glove, same everything basically. Now the shirt, I actually found this shirt on Google and wanted it, and I actually bought the shirt myself before I put it in the game so yeah if I can find if I take a picture of it I'll show it but came out perfect Chicago Bull with the scarf from the uh, city but yeah this is the only person with a second attire out of these bad people I've showed so uh yeah on to the next character next we have the misfit yes you heard right misfit this is misfit from the dark carnival my plan originally was to break up the Dark Carnival. I had a whole storyline for it. And this was, was going to happen. Misfit was going to go off and do his own thing instead of being Misfit, be the Misfit. 
and he was gonna have his group the misfits so yeah but this is him on next gen uh i actually made him on for the first time on smash vs 2011 actually i just never showed him and then i made him again in w 12 13 and no i didn't make him in 12 actually i made him in 11 i made him in 11 13 and 14 but i just never showed him so yeah well to you guys anyway on youtube but yeah that was the plan though so this is face paint face paint basically the same from when i did the last time it's simple it's nothing extravagant and i did that on purpose so yeah um attire is pretty self-explanatory uh the misfit so yeah um i love this chest tattoo so yeah i i just love it <laughs> uh the orange sleeves i think undertaker but that's i have a okay the problem with me and custom orange sleeves is like you have to do so much to get it to look right and sometimes i don't be feeling like dealing with it so eventually i'm gonna do it but yeah um so the chest tattoo is a custom tattoo of course and the left arm, the whole thing is custom tattoos too. That's it's two actually. It's one on the top and one at the bottom. Uh, no back tattoos. Uh, the Hogan belt. I got the Hogan DLC. So you got the Hogan belt with the misfit on it. Uh, these are Christian tights as well. Um, I didn't even realize I used them actually. Uh, the misfits on the side. And a little white logo in the middle, just to split it up. The tights actually match the face paint if you look at it. So yeah. And then the um right back t-shirt that I always wanted to use for somebody. So I gave it to Misfit. I actually gave it to myself first. But I gave it to myself first and I put it under the Bray White shirt. But then in the entrance, I figured out that this shirt lashed through anything else that you have over it so i just had to take it off so yeah and he got uh these not cane boots i think they're one of batista boots but yeah the misfit ladies and gentlemen he came out came out exactly how i wanted him to come out uh, i have a fixation with vampiro from wcw he's always been one of my favorites in wcw my little brother favorite superstar was staying him out of vampiro he used to you know go ahead back and forth about who was better and two people I've always made, well, actually now three that I've always made that's, that's, that have been inspired by Vampiro are um, now the Misfit. It was Chaos and Dread. Those three people were always inspired by Vampiro, and I, and maybe you didn't know that, maybe you could know, you did know that because of their look, but that's where their inspiration came from. But this is Misfit. So uh, on to the next character. And of course, um, the second person, well, the next person, after the Misfit would be formerly uh, Mischief of the Dark Carnival. Now I'm going by Mr. J. Like I said before, my plan was to bring up the Dark Carnival. Misfit was going to go a separate, separate way. Mischief was going to go his separate way. And um, Quinn was going to go her separate way. I had a whole storyline, personas and everything they were all going to take. This is Mischief's persona that he was going to take. Uh, Mr. J. Y'all know Mr. J is another nickname for the Joker. So, the problem with Mr. J, though, is I did not... Originally, when I did it, I, I, I gave the Dark Carnival Joker Joker Ish attires before for a tag team. But then I took him away because I knew that I was going to do something else with it. So then, what happened was... When I made him officially as Mr. J, I did it in, um, I think it was 14. I did, Yeah, it was 14. I didn't show it, but I did it in 14. I liked it, but it was still, it still looked basically the same as that tag team was how I did for them. And he had Heath Leather's Joker face paint. And I've seen so many people use Joker's actual face paint, and I didn't want to use it. And Infamous said the same thing, like, I shouldn't do that. So I didn't know what to do. I wanted to do a Joker style face paint, but not the Joker face paint. And I was looking at Sting's face paint when he did the Joker thing, and it wasn't perfect at all, but it had remnants of the Joker in it. It was his own custom Joker face paint. So I wanted to do something like that, 
But then I came across this mask slash face paint. And I was like, that would be perfect for Mr. J. So I got it. I tweaked it a little bit. Did it the way I wanted. And this is Mr. J. Now, the only problem I have with it is I would like to get rid of that little, I guess it's a bullet hole at the top on the uh, left side of his forehead. I could get rid of it. I just didn't do it. After I was done with the attire, I thought to do it. It just didn't feel like going back and changing. So, yeah. But that's Mr. J's face paint. Um, and this is his attire. So, first we're going to start with the test. That is a clown. That's a clown skull with a hat coming out of his chest. Now, it originally had color in it. But when I put it on with the color and transparency, to me, it didn't look right. To other people, it did. So, I just decided to make it completely transparent and change it. Um, his arms tattoos are in-game tattoos. So, yeah, that's special there. Uh, the Hogan belt said Joker on the back. Uh, this is a Joker crime scene attire I guess pants Gotham City cars all over the place I found this fucking picture and just ran with it I was like no work needed I'm just going to use this and stretch it so the boots uh, just got a skull on the side I actually don't need those skulls on the side I put it there when I was done the attire I was like I don't need it but I haven't deleted it yet um okay this right here is, is this right here has been a big deal to me I'm so pissed that, like I just said when I was doing Misfit, I've always been a fan of Vampiro. I've always wanted a a sleeveless leather jacket in the game. To the one sleeveless leather biker jacket in the game. To where it looks like the regular biker jacket in the game, but just no sleeves. Like Vampiro used to wear back in the day. And like Tamina wears now in WWE. Maybe she don't wear it no more, I don't know, but still. So... I gave him the regular black vest and I was like cool but I wish I could do that and then I realized that I can import pictures so I cut out the front of a vest put it in the game imported it put it on the front and voila boom a damn sleeveless biker vest and it works and I, I'm not complaining about it I did it again because the first one came out real pixelated this one actually came out a little pixelated as well but it looks way better than the first one I'm pretty sure if I do it again I can make it come out perfect but I'm done right now so yeah the back I, I cut out the front of the vest put it on I cut out the back of the vest and put it on the back says Mr. J with um the, the um what's the shit called ransom letters uh it's this YouTube series it, 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 it's been out a while it's called Sincerely Mr. J and um I remember watching one of the videos at the end when it said Sincerely Mr. J it had this actual ransom letter font for the Mr. J and I loved how it looked so I just cut that out and put it on so yeah but this is Mr. J ladies and gentlemen um formerly known as Mischief had a big storyline plan but uh yeah I guess we'll see what happens now and here we have the last person of the call update video um this is Dread um you should remember Dread, but if you don't, I created Dread for the first time in um, WWE, was it 12? I think it was 12, it was 12 or 13, but regardless, those were the only games I made him in, I didn't make him in 14, brought him back on next gen 15, and this is Dread, um, face came out basically exactly the same, um, what I did was, I, I took a snapshot of him in um, WD13 and I, I cut out his face paint. I didn't cut out his face, I cut out his face paint. And I had to edit it and tweak it to get it to look right. And this, it, and it came out exactly how I wanted it. So this is his actual face with his face paint from last year's game. Well, yeah, from the 360 WD13. Import it into the next gen, put on his face to look right. So, yeah. Okay, now that that's out the way. Um, the attire. Well, tattoos first. So, when I made him, he had a sleeve tattoo of random skulls. That, that three skull design that was in the game, I just stretched it all over his sleeve, and he had skulls on. Now, if Randy Orton tattoo was in the game at that point, I would have just used this. 
So I did it this year. Now I tried to go find a skull tattoo, a, a sleeve skull tattoo, with just skulls all over the place. And every one I found just didn't look right, or just didn't, it just wasn't what I was looking for. So, yeah. Um, he actually had a skull coming onto his chest from the sleeve, but I couldn't do that this year, so I just worked with it. I put the Grim Reaper tattoo right there. It's dark like that because the little logo at the top of the sleeve is dark, so that's why it's dark like that. Got a little Undertaker skull hanging on the back of his neck. Uh, these are all custom right here. Well, that's the Batista tattoo, you know that. I just put that there. Um, that's a skull with a snake coming through it on his chest. Spider web, spider crawling up, stars around, the scorpion on the back, and that says DOA right there. The A is covered up by the wristband. So yeah, don't ask me why I didn't move the DOA so you can see it because um, people don't get tattoos to the point to where they want it to where they wear certain things. You're gonna always see it. It just so happens that if when you wear certain things, certain parts of it is covered. When you wear certain things, certain parts of it not covered. So yeah, that's just how that goes. Now this attire. Um, some of you, most of you may know this. Uh, Infamous, aka Insanity, made this attire in 12 or 13, I can't remember which one. It was actually an idea for uh, S.D. Smith's character, Scorn. And Smitty never did it because he said that it would have been too much he, had to, he would have to take away from Scorn as far as the layers he had to do the attire. So, with that being said, I love the attire so much that I decided to give it to Dread. At, th at that point, I didn't have an attire that I liked for Dread. So, um, I took it and ran with it. Uh, I remade it this year, and it pissed me off doing this attire because this year, when you edit logos after you placed it on, it doesn't stay in the same position. So, when you get the position wrong the first, you have to get the position right the first time, basically. Because if you get it wrong, you got to go back, resize it, and place it in the position that you want. And it pisses me off. I think I redid these types at least 15 times. At least 15 times. till I got it to the point where it's perfect. Oh my god, this shit pissed me off. Oh my god. But, um, yeah. So, this is Dread. The, the the actual logos came out with a little bit more color in it than I thought they did when I was on a computer. I think it's because I'm on a laptop and you know how you when you tilt the screen a certain way, you know, you get more light or you get, you know, darkness. And I was looking at the, my screen a certain way to where I thought it had a faded yellow in it, but it actually had more yellow in it. So when I put it in the game, I'm like, oh. But it still works out. I don't have a problem with it, so. But it's fine. You got cane boots, cane wristbands, and the dread tights. Formerly used, so formerly supposed to be for scoring the infamous made. Thank you, infamous, for the tights. And thank you, Smiggity, for not using them. <laughs> but uh, this is dread, everybody. Love how you came out. Same attire for dread, not gonna be much, just a color change. But um, that's dread. That's his uh, first attire. And um, this is the last person on a call update. Now, um, just future reference, I post all my people on calls.ws and the SmackDown Hotel forum. Um, so if I don't upload a video, mostly when I make somebody new, I take a screenshot and I put it on those sites first. Because it's quicker to just post a picture on there than it is to make a video. So trust me, when I'm not uploading videos, I am creating people. So just know that much. Um, I still plan on doing the show. I mean, the showcase videos of the interests, interests, finishes, and signature moves. I plan on trying to do something else too. I'm not gonna say it yet because I gotta see how that works out. But yeah, uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm D29, Dang Dang, and um, I'm out. See y'all next time.